Hello and welcome back to another episode of Modeling on the Fly with 3DS Max, and we're still working on uh, the what has become pretty highly detailed head area of this AT-AT Walker. Now, we finished this hinge part up here where our blaster kind of connects to the underside of the head, and it just felt a little puny to me when we got done. So, I know I'm kind of winging some of this, but you know some of these pictures aren't the most detailed in the world, so let's see. Let's not do that. Uh, let's switch over to Select Tool. I'm going to grab this and then control alt to deselect all this other stuff. In fact, we could probably make everything transparent and yeah, we get exactly what we want then. Awesome. So now let's scale up a little and we'll just make this guy bigger. So maybe something right about like so. Um, I'm just kind of winging it. Something that just feels a little more solid than what was already there. Nothing other than I just want to feel better about the overall size of it. So, all right, so now if we move forward, uh, let me take a look through some of my pictures. I'm looking for one in particular. Let's start taking a look at these shapes. Now, these are pretty interesting in that we can't really tell from this angle. And this starts to kind of give it away. We've got this plate up here that kind of separates all this stuff. Uh, it, this is... Now, this guy's got a little bit of an angle here. I'm not sure that I see this angle on every single iteration of the model. Not the same way. You see, this looks very, very straightforward. Uh, just kind of a, a direct uh, cylinder, straightforward, and then this kind of slopes down to it. So a lot of it is just who you're listening to. Uh, sometimes you're going to get you know one, one kind of interpretation, sometimes it'll be another. So when in doubt, I say make it up yourself. That's the way I'm going to do it. So uh, let's see here, a couple of things. We still are going to need to make some sort of connecting piece that builds up here, and we don't really have any indication of what that's supposed to look like, so I will make it up. But right now I want to focus on this guy. Now, I do like what I see on this photo with this little detail jammed in here so I would like to make use of that uh, everything else we're just gonna kinda start you know putting some stuff together and we'll just see how it turns out now uh, let's convert this guy over to an editable polygon and with it selected let's go to polygons I want these two out of the way now Let's see, if I kind of select straight across the top here, we could do a marquee selection, and that's pretty much the top. So that looks nice. Now let's see, if I take a look at my edit faces, we should be able to detach that, and I'm going to detach that as its own object. So we're, we just have the lower part now. So the lower part and the upper part as two entirely separate creatures. So let's get out of Editable Poly. I'm going to grab this guy all kind of by himself and just kind of lift him up. Let's just worry about this guy by himself all alone. And vertices. I want to slide these forward to make room for some of that detail that we're seeing back here. Now, let's see. To release Screaming Temporal Doom. Five points to whoever gets that quote. Let's see. Let's grab this guy again. After pulling that thing out of my way. And grab edges. I want these two edges. I want to slide them up with a shift drag. So, shoom. Oh, did I only get one after all that effort? You know, that's just disappointing. Foom. There we go. That's When you get a foom, you know, it needs to just work, right? Okay. So now with that, we should be able to come back over here. Now, let's see here. Let's grab you and you, and then we'll shift drag these backwards to about there. Yeah, it'll work. That will work, he said. Now, hmm. What I want to do next, let's grab this edge and this edge, and I'm going to bridge these. Then we'll grab borders, and I'll cap this guy. Now, that's going to almost give me exactly what I want. I want to grab this by itself. Um, you could probably just leave it like that, and it'll be just fine. So, you know what? Let's just do that. Um, so, cool. Let's grab you, and then 
you over here and we'll bridge those. Now here's an interesting idea. I don't know how well this is going to work. But I guess that's how the best ideas come out, right? Uh, let's grab this guy. I'm going to do an inset. And maybe not quite that much. So to say right about there. Click OK. Now. Hmm. Insetting there is my first impulse, but not necessarily the way I want to handle that. So... Yeah, we could do it the way I'm thinking, but... Okay, uh, let me just roll with it, see what we get. Uh, let's do an inset here with both these guys selected. And that's kind of working okay. Now, I'm going to pull you guys out entirely. Let's grab... This guy, we're going to slide him back to about here. Let's go to vertices, and we'll use target weld and put you there, and put you there. And then I'll grab these faces and just make them planar. There we go. Now, in doing all of that, what have I really accomplished? Well, I've given myself the ability to, at the very least, grab some faces, not those faces exactly, but this one and this one, and I can extrude out, and let's go by local normal, and that's a little bit extreme, so just a little bit out, like so, click OK, grab this face by itself and we can pull this back in like so we'll just go ahead and intersect it and not worry about the the details and then if we want just a little bit of flare we could take this and slide this back a little take these guys here and here and we can do the same thing just slide those back so we create kind of a little slant there awesome now, with that done, let's grab a sphere of Thea and let's do a hemisphere of 0.5. And segments of 32 is pretty extreme, but let's just go with it anyway. And we'll slap that right about there. And I think that'll work. Convert that to an editable poly. Line up the viewport as best we can to right about here. Hit faces. Give me these faces. Plus. Plus that guy. Now, well, almost got what I wanted. I should be doing this from a, an orthographic view. And I know it, but I'm not. So, boom. Now, back over here to create. Let's make a tube. And drag that over here to the other side. Okay. And then what? We could just do like a box that kind of fits right in here and has some height. And then convert that. Grab its edges here and here and just cham for the living daylight out of those to really kind of round that out and then we'll just get a cylinder and stick it right there and we'll convert that get faces, do a quick bevel Okay, now uh, let's grab you and let's convert this one 
and then I'll attach this one. Right click to get out of attach. Let's grab edges here, 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 and here. Loop them all, chamfer all at once. Click OK. Uh, go back to editable poly, kind of center those up a little. We could grab this face. So let's get out of editable poly mode, get this guy. Grab this face, let's do a little bit of a bevel on that. So it looks nice and rounded. And I guess the last thing I would want to do on this would be to get at least these guys. Let's see, loop, because I'm lazy. Cool, and let's chamfer these out by just a tiny little bit. And click OK, and there we go. No, actually I want to chamfer a little bit on this guy too. Just because, well, because I think he needs it. Now you know what all the three, the hardcore 3ds Maxers are all like. You know, if you named every single object, you could use uh, H to select that. And they're probably right. All right, so let's see. Do 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 do. Auto smooth. That's good. Now, edge. Get you loop around. <laughs> How about you loop a little bit further? Okay, don't. You know, don't put yourself out on my account. Heck with it. Four. Get you and you. Convert to edges. Deselect this guy. Then do a chamfer. Woohoo. There we are. Elements. Get the whole guy here. Auto smooth. Let's see what 30 does for me. That's pretty close to what I was going for. It's not exactly it, but it'll do. So now let's back out here. And you know what? Let's do a great big selection. And then I'll deselect this guy and this guy. Drop on the material. And there we go. So yeah, it's got some detail to it, and it looks like it does what it's supposed to do, and that's awesome. So we're not off the hook yet, not by a little bit of a long shot, because we've got, uh, you, you can actually see the little bit of a bevel where it, it kind of slopes down here, and these all kind of need to connect together. Now what I'm seeing, and it's it's hard to make out at first, is that this whole upper plate is tapering even underneath this guy. Which, I mean, I don't know if I would have made it that way, but, well, it looks like somebody may have, so all we can do is just say, oh, okay. So, <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do. Let's get this guy, let's hit F4, because I want to see what's going on. Uh, grab, actually, what I'd like to get is vertices, so let's hit 1. Grab these, slide back a ways. Now, how far back? Um, I don't know, about maybe to about here. And then let's see. Can we can we switch that to edges without things going too insane? No, I really can't. It's gonna go really insane. Uh, but we can loop that, and that looks good. So let's see here. Well, to get the effect that I'm looking for, probably the easiest thing to do uh, would be to cap this off. So the way I would do that would be to actually grab this edge and this edge, and I would bridge these and then get borders and grab this border and just cap that then switch over to faces grab this face do a little bit of an inset like so because I don't want much just enough to tell one surface from another because I'm, I'm noticing this line here if you're following and uh, we can then let's just extrude that out 
By how much? Oh, I don't know. Is it about to here? <laughs> so uh, let's see. Let's come out here, and we're getting there. Now, obviously, I don't think my cannon is in the same position because uh, they do slide back and forth. I think my cannon actually needs to be brought a little bit forward. Maybe not. Actually, the, it looks like the whole thing can be extended a bit. So let's do that. So maybe to here, grab these guys and move to here. And there we go. Now this has got these funny slits in it, and I'm going to save those. I'm not going to worry about those just this second. The first thing I want to do is get this change in elevation down and looking right. And to do that, I mean, it'd be nice if we had kind of a clear idea of where it starts. It looks like it starts up here and slides down. Also, from this angle, this change in thickness might actually slant forward a little bit, at least on this particular model. It's a little difficult to tell. I'm thinking it does. And the reason I think that is that this guy's pretty much straight in line with us. And this guy, if, if you kind of put a plane, a flat plane across that edge, it would be uh, foreshortened, pointing inward, and this guy's actually you know, kind of leaning forward. I realize that might be a little tricky for you to follow. And if that's the case, I really am sorry. I don't know if any other way to put it. But, hmm, if I was going to do that... There's a trick I can try, and I don't do this one very much, but, you know... if So if it blows up because I haven't done it in such a long time, then, well, by all means, snicker at my misfortune. But, uh, ooh, well, I've got these floating grids out here. Aren't those... Uh, those are grouped to some stuff. I don't want to mess with stuff that's grouped to other things. Heck with that. Now, do I have a side picture of these? It, well, that's a terrible picture. I don't trust that. I don't like that. They're just making some stuff up, which is what I should be doing. But yeah, like right, right there, you can see that looks like it kind of slants forward, right? So how do we want to do that? Well, if we wanted to leave everything so that it didn't really change its shape, there's a bunch of ways we could do it. But I want to try something. Really, it's just for my own edification, just to play with, because doing this kind of thing makes me happy sometimes. Uh, let's put a grid in here. And let's rotate that grid. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> let's put that back to something useful. There we go. Now I'll rotate this to about the angle and position that we want all this stuff to be in. That's a little bit too steep, so let's pull that back. I guess that's relative, isn't it? All right, cool. Now, let me try this. Let's activate the grid. So that is now an active grid, and I can then activate the home grid. Give me this guy. Give me vertices. Give me these vertices. And grid align. And that kind of slides them around more than I really want it to. Uh, so... Let's see, can I lock them in? See, if I do it with edge constraints on, I'm afraid I'm going to get some really scary stuff. By rights, I should get some really scary stuff. So if we do this, brace yourself. Yeah, that's pretty scary. That's not at all what we want. So let's turn off grid align. Well, I'm sorry, turn off edge constraint. And that's so close. I mean, if I slide that up, how close are we talking? Uh, probably close enough that it would work. You know? Now, here's another trick that might work. Um, what if we switch over to a front view and click that? I don't know if that's going to do what I want it to, but. No, it still pulled it down a little bit. Okay, I had to try, though. In fact, I'm going to give that a little bit more rotation. And then switch over, and we'll do that one more time. Cool. 
cool. And then to kind of clean all that up, we'll just take all this and slide it up again. So yeah, it's not 100% perfectly flush, but I think it's flush enough that that'll actually work for us. Okay, now back over to our picture. We've got the kind of slant down and this other piece up here that does some stuff. It's got these uh, really cool, almost like a, a weird shoe kind of shape. And then it's got these indentions. So very, very neat looking shape overall that we need to create here. And... First off, the first thing we need to do is get this piece that we've been working on kind of out of the way. So that's got to get cut down. All this stuff can be cut back, I'm sure. So how would I do that? Well, uh, let me grab... Uh, I don't want to do that. Let me freeze all that stuff back. Image planes need to be frozen. Thank you. I've been putting all that stuff into that layer. Isn't that funny? And they're like, well, not really. Not if it bites you as hard as it just did. And then add selected objects. So now I should be able to freeze that back and those guys should all be right where they were. All right, now back over here. Hmm. That probably just needs to be cut back. I wonder, though, that should have a central line to it. Everything is fairly symmetrical. So let me put a symmetry modifier on here. And we want to do this uh, not in Z. Well, I get, yeah, in X, we were right to begin with, and that looks nice and clean. Now, if we... Hmm. Let's grab this. And show the end result. Good. So at least we're working on the right side. Okay, cool. Now what I'm going to do here... So I'm going to frame up on this guy. Let me get my cut tool out. And we're just going to make kind of a weird sort of cut. Now, if you're seeing what I'm seeing, it looks like this plate, this change in elevation, actually stops right here. I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, that's not going to be the kind of thing I beat myself up over tonight. I have all sorts of stuff I could beat myself up over. That's not going to be one of them. Uh, let's cut from here to about... There. And we'll cut that in toward the center. Now, if I get faces... Oh, yeah, actually, we need some other cutting, too. Okay. Now, let's start removing some faces. We'll kill that out, and that out, and that, and that. And let's rotate up a little bit. That can go, and that can go, and that can go. Alright, now, let's see, I'm just kind of checking out the game plan so far. I think we can also just get rid of these entirely, and then we can add thickness again where we need it. Now, hmm, something else kind of bothering me. Let's go ahead and remove this as well, just since I'm here and since I don't need it anymore. We'll make that go away. And we'll get rid of the little bridging polygons here. Since I'm never really anticipating a camera cramming up in here, I don't feel too bad about this. Okay. 
Cool. Now let's get out of here. Let's reconvert this back over to its own editable poly. So that has all been cut away and is nice and clean. Now I want to try something. I think it should work just fine. I don't see why it won't, but all right, let's grab you. Actually, you know what? Um, pardon me. Let me leave the symmetry modifier on for this operation because I don't want to have to do it again. And if I don't have to drop another symmetry modifier, so much the better. Give me this edge right here. Let's shift drag that in a little. Let's do a target weld on vertices. Put that together. Okay. Now, this is where it starts to get kind of fun. Let's get this edge. Actually, no. Pardon me. Let's get these edges. I said I wasn't going to mess with this, and I think I actually am because I thought of a way I could do it. So we'll pull this up. We will grab edges here, ring, connect. I does not want to connect all the way back, but that's all right. I'm not going to force it. Uh, let's grab the cut tool, and I'll cut this. Oh, actually, let's pull that not back quite so far. So it's right about there. And then cut from here to here. All right. Now, back to edges. Get out of cut mode. Pull this up. Back to vertices. Let's weld these two together. Target weld U down to there. So that should be relatively a straight line. We can probably straighten it out a little bit like that. Take this guy. And heck, you know, let's just turn on edge constraints for just a moment. And we'll slide that down until that's about level. And so now we've got the change in elevation there. So if we get out of here, press F four we've got exactly what I was trying to build um, or exactly what I needed to build to get that part to uh, to line up correctly okay so that's looking pretty good let's do a couple of things to clean this up I th I could probably at this point go ahead and get rid of the symmetry modifier I'm gonna hold on to it a little bit kind of out of more paranoia I guess than anything else um, but let's see, auto smoothing that's just a little bit too much at 45. So let's do 25 auto smooth, and that should make everything nice and clean in that direction. We can put shell on that to um, to clean up and add a little bit of thickness. Uh, we got those funny little slits across the bottom, and that's a consideration. So let's press F4 and come over here. I want to grab some edges. Actually, make sure you have the right object. Uh, let's get these edges, and I want... Mm, mm, that was fantastic. So, edge. You know, I'm going to go ahead and lose that symmetry modifier. I kept kind of going back and forth in my head, but it's just it's getting in my way now. All right, now, edge, you, connect, nah. Well, I need to ring it obviously, so cancel, get this guy, then ring, and then do a connect. Now, let's do two of these, and that's probably in a good enough location to do what I want to do. Now, let's get one, see if we can get that to about the same side, or the same distance on either side. I think this is our midpoint. So we have three and then another one. So one, two, three, and this guy. And 
and grab all these edges all the way around. Okay, now let's chamfer these. And we don't need too much, just a little bit. And click OK. Now I need to do some target welding. I'm curious about something. Um, if I hadn't done what I just did, if I did a chamfer, and I added a segment, what do we get? We get that kind of madness, which I can clean up, but is it really worth it to try? No, it's not. We'll leave that at one. I had to know, though. All right, now, back over to vertices, and then to target welding, and I'm going to target weld you up here, and you up here, and same thing here. And same thing here. All right, now, to faces. And wow, that's a lot more face than I need. Actually, you know what? Hmm. Let's do something. Uh, let's see if I grab these two. What happens if we grab the scale tool, let's switch over to just view, which is fine, and then go by individual object. So we can scale that up, and we can grab these four and scale these up. Now I'm going to work kind of from the outside in a little bit. I can probably do all these together. So let's just get all of them. Boom, 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 and boom. And then scale. That's pretty close. Maybe just deselect these guys. Oh, it looks like I left some out. Did you see that? It's no good. Oh, killer. I love it when that happens. Pull these back down a little. So that's pretty smooth. That's really all I was going for there. Now, let's see. From there, let's grab, I guess, any one of these, probably. And if I ring, I get all of them. So then let's connect those. Just once, please. Click OK. Well, we could do two, but let's just see if we can get away with one. Now, if I chamfer those, these become really odd faces that I wouldn't necessarily want to leave that way. Also, our smoothing groups are a little bit wacky now. So let's switch over to elements. Grab that. We'll fix all that stuff here in just a moment. And, you know, maybe back down to 25 and auto smooth. Awesome. Okay. Now, vertices again. And, yeah, all this stuff really needs some straightening up. I'm going to try something, though. Let's grab edge constraints. And these two. Hmm. Let's see if I can do it to everybody at once. Gotta be really careful with the viewport here. And there, and there, and there, and so close. Get this guy and this guy, and then scale. And scale back a little. Yeah, that kind of works. The only other thing I might do would be to clean up the far corners a little bit. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see if I can just cut that and then cut that. And we'll just do that all the way around.
Okay, now let's see if we can clean up our smoothing groups once again. Get out of here, press F4, and see what this looks like. Well, it's got the two cuts in it. And we've gotten a little bit further along in the body of our cannon, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here, and then when we get back, we'll continue putting together our cannons for the AT-AT Walker. I want to thank you for watching, and thank all of our member sponsors who make these videos possible, and I will see you on the next episode of Modeling on the Fly with 3ds Max. Take it easy.